Hi, welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. This is episode 44, Winter's Depths, and I am your host, Steph, also known as Knitting Samurai. Wow. <laughs> it is Saturday, February 9th, 2013. Yes, it's the 9th. Um, we are in the middle, middle of the nor'easter winter storm Nemo right now. So I have been filming little clips throughout yesterday and today, and I thought I would bring you the latest in storm blizzard coverage. Hi, kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> You're so silly. Moving kind of slow, Ro. You did it. it. Uh oh, Popeye. Popeye stick. Yeah, stick my Popeye. Bring back my friend the stick. Oh, I know. <laughs> Good job. Saturday morning about 7 a.m. I would say we have 16, 18 inches of snow on the ground. And I was just sitting here watching the snow come down diagonally. Extremely fast with these wind gusts tossing it everywhere. I don't think I've ever seen it snow like this, this fast, this intensity really kind of cool. So it's noon on Saturday and I am standing in the living room where we were playing, looking at where we were playing yesterday. It's our backyard. And you can see there's the lawn chair that Roland was standing next to. Yeah. It's gone. <laughs> I think it stopped snowing. Oh no, no, it's still snowing. There's Mac and Linus. Very curious about what's going on outside, what I'm so curious in. There's that lawn chair and our Valentine's Day decal. So there you go. The snow is about up to the top of my thighs. That's about how high that is right there. It's a lot of snow. I will see you. Roland just went down for a nap and we'll probably head outside around 4 if it stops snowing. So hopefully I'll get some footage then too. There he goes. Where's the plow truck? What do you think, Roland? Yay! No! Uh oh. Daddy's lost a mitten. <laughs> oh, you can do it! So I hope you enjoyed my little snippets throughout the storm. Um, 
it's been amazing to sit here and watch. As I said, you know, 1978 was the last time we had a blizzard of this magnitude, and that was before before we were all in this house born. So it's cool to watch. Cool to watch. I'm glad, so thankful to be warm and toasty in our house with power and all our modern conveni conveniences and just enjoying being together and kind of snowbound. So, um, this past week has been a doozy for us. Um, Stephen tells me that it's called the rhinovirus. So Roland came home. He went to, Stephen Roland went to the museum on Friday of last week and so a week ago, yesterday. And they were playing um, with all the other kids and whatever. And then Saturday, Steve went off to work and Roland and I were hanging out and it was a messy day. <laughs> and it was the first time he had gotten sick before like that. Well, the second time, but the first time he was really small. So, and Steve handled it and I was at work that day. So for me to take care of it, it was just... It was fine. I made it through it. But at one point, I did run around holding him out like this, going, I don't know what to do with you. I don't know what to do with you. I don't know what to do with you. And then we landed in the sink, the kitchen sink, and I stripped all his clothes off and wrapped him in, um, wrapped him in a dish towel, like a hand a towel, a drying towel, wrapped him in it, and held him, because that's all he wanted was just like, Mom, you hold me. I'm scared. And he kept pointing to his tummy. It was kind of sad. And, uh, yeah, so we made it through. That was fine. And then Sunday, he was feeling better, and I was cooking for the Super Bowl and all the prep. Did I record last weekend? I feel like I was like, yeah, watch the Super Bowl. I don't know. Anyways, um, I was cooking. I made chili and these special brownies, and our friends were coming over, and they're here, and we're watching the game. Well, we were about to watch the game. It was like two minutes before. They started singing the national anthem, and I was like, whoa, excuse me, guys, I gotta go upstairs. So then I was sick all that night. I missed the whole Super Bowl. Well, I saw halftime, and I saw the power outage, but I was like in and out, you know that, when you're like uh, so groggy and sleepy and sick. So that was my Sunday, and then Monday, I was sick all day. He was sick on and off. He got sick a bit more. Steve took care of both of us, and then Monday night, Steve came upstairs and was like, I don't feel so good, and so then I got him. Oh, it was just a doozy. And then by Tuesday, Roland was completely better. He was back on the mend, and Steve and I were both still sick, so we each pulled up a couch, and we basically were like, all right, we know we said no TV until you're two, but Curious George! <laughs> so we watched... I think five episodes of Curious George. Watched a lot of Curious George that day and just tried to keep him entertained. So, but we're fixed. We are fixed and better. And we celebrated Friday, this Friday night, by having Chinese, like our first back to normal, not just rice <laughs> kind of meal. So we had rice, fried rice. But it was funny. Uh, so that's been my week. I don't normally do a week in review, but. I don't know. I feel like I need to explain because I don't have a lot of knitting to show you. A lot of good progress. So, um, enough rambly bits. Let's get into it. So, Dark and Stormy Cal is um, coming towards the end. So, the cowl has been running since January 1st and it's going to go. How about I sway? You think that would be annoying for you guys? <laughs> It's going to go to February 28th, so here's the things you have to do if you want to be entered for the prize drawings, which I haven't pulled the prizes. I have a few, right? Some people have donated things, and I need to pull a few more things from my stash and make sure it's delicious. Um, number one, tag your project with the tag dark KSPI, so knitting samurai plus one, dark K S P I, a P I P one, <laughs> number one, um, and then post a picture in the finished objects thread. I know a lot of you that finished like after two weeks, three weeks, I hadn't put that, I hadn't opened that thread yet. It's open now. Please go put your finished project in there so we can all flip through it and ooh la, nah, and it'll make things a little easier for me when I go to drop prizes. So um, the dark and stormy cow is going along strong. <sighs> It's a love-hate for me. It really is. Like, I'm torn because it's my knit along stool. I need to finish it. So looking at the calendar, I have now 19 days to finish it. I'm talking with my hands and writing them. 
sorry. Um, 19 days to finish it. And I'll alternate between being super excited and, oh, let me do one more cable row and go, 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 to, oh, I'm so sick of knitting on this, <laughs> to, okay, okay, just push through, do a little more, do a little more. <laughs> so, how about I show you? So here's where I'm at. Something just beeped. Apparently there was a message. Um, I have, last time I showed it to you, I was about six inches past the armhole. And so much exciting progress because that whole time I was sick. I think it was, I worked on Wednesday, Wednesday night. I, I, um, knit so I didn't knit at all from Saturday to Wednesday which was just crazy talk or I should say Sunday because I knit on Saturday but I didn't knit on Sunday so I have the body needs to be 15 inches long and at present in a relaxed state I had a job right out of college where I was working as a temp for a garment company learned how to measure garments. So, in a relaxed state without pulling on the fabric, I can tell you that I have 11 and 3 quarters inches done. So, that's what, 3 and a quarter inches to go um, on the body. So, that's not that bad. I think it's two cable twists. But, I am using Cascade 220 Heathers. It is not a super wash yarn in the color 2424 and you can see there are my cable details. I hope you can see the snow makes it bright but then the overcast makes it not so great so hopefully you can see but they're coming along. I have um, I have one, two, three, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine done. So I think I have to do 10 or 11 and then I start the ribbing at the bottom and that will be perfect mindless knitting because this it's great. Like if I was gonna knit a sweater, I would want a majority stock in that sweater, which is what this is, with a little bit of interest in the back to push me through it. So, or not in the back, but a little bit of interest to keep me going. So, it has been a really fun knit. I would highly recommend this pattern. Um, I haven't done the collar and the button band, that whole big edging. So, I'm I'm anticipating I'll get frustrated and angry. But at this point right now, I highly recommend this sweater. Um, I'll show you. Here's, so I bought, I have eight skeins of the yarn. I'm thin, so these are the two that are left. I, this is what I had remaining of a skein after completing a sleeve. So, just to give you an idea, I, I would say it was three quarters of a skein per sleeve for me. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. Uh oh, um, 19 days. <laughs> And you guys are probably so sick of hearing about this thing that you're like, God, is it done yet? Is it done yet? Because I have to tell you, we're going to go through the 28th, and then the week I record after that will be the prize drawing. So you have to hear about it a little bit longer. But it's been a lot of fun, and I loved it this week. I um, cast on the color affection on Sunday. Oh, I did knit a little on Sunday, because I cast that on on Sunday and prepped for the Super Bowl, thinking I would work on that during the game while our friends were here. And yeah, I'm upstairs wharfing my guts out and our friends stayed. Like, how oh, hot is that? And Steve kept coming up to help me and check on me and bring me things and yeah. I guess it's the Super Bowl and you don't want to drive away and miss anything. I don't know. I love them and they're fine. And they didn't, they didn't bother me down, but man, I would have been running for the hills, so. But as of, yeah, as of last night when I talked to them, they didn't get it, they were fine. So it was something about the cleaning it up that made you get it, because Steve was at the museum on Friday, he didn't get it, but enough about that. Um, yeah, so I cast on the color affection during the day, and then I was like, oh, I would way rather knit on this than the dark and stormy. That was the natural gas company. They wanted to inform us that um, we need to clear our meters and how to do so. Use a broom, use a shovel. Thank you. I've never been through a snowstorm before. When I've never seen snow piled up this high. Um, <laughs> so I cast down the color affection on Sunday. And I really wanted to knit it. And then I didn't want to knit it. <laughs> What's up? I think it's the deep winter just 
Ugh, it's a big mountain of dark blue. I, t I thought the purple, the bright purple would be exciting, but mm, not so much. So, um, I cast it on and then I sat. Because I was thinking I would knit on it during the game, but that wasn't going to happen, obviously. So, um, here's what I got so far. And it's not very exciting. It's a little purple triangle. But these are going to be my colors. And this is going to be the progression. I've shown it before. So this is Miss Babs. Yummy. In um, Impatience, Deep Sea Jellyfish, and Impatient. Um, I bet this is Impatient. And this is Impatient. I bet they have the same color. But one is cooked longer or something. But, uh, yeah. So I'm using U.S. size 6 needles, which is 4 millimeter, right? I can ask these needles. These needles are smart. There is one little main leaf blowing around in the backyard on the snow. Yes, 4 millimeters. So um, I have to tell you, I really like Miss Babs. I've knit a sweater and now a hat, and um, I don't really like the, the drape of this. It, it's not as yummy as I would like it to be. So I don't know if the needle size is off, if I need to change that so that it is a little more. It's just not as soft as I would like. I guess that would mean it's too airy and I need a denser fabric. So maybe I'll go down the needle size. Maybe I'll go, maybe I'll try it on fours and see. Because I do want it to be smaller. I don't want a 1100 1, yard shawl. It just seems excessive. And I have a lot of shawls. I don't wear them. But I really want to knit this. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down to a four and see if I like it better. I was excited to use my signatures, but I don't think I'm going to like the end result of this. It's like you feel the bumps a little too much, if that makes sense. So, I don't know. I don't know. I might go on time though. There are other things that I'm thinking I want to be doing thinking I want to be doing. So, um, speaking of knitting with Miss Babs yarn, I can show you that my Welted Toque by Melissa Labray is finished. Um, it hasn't been blocked yet, but I did weave in my end, so yay! This is the Timberline colorway. It is a gorgeous semi-solid purple brown colorway. And this, I love the hand of this. This is the um, Yummy Sport. So it's a little heavier yarn. I don't know what size needles I knitted on. And I didn't write it down. But it came out really nice. If I put it on, it's going to mess up my little clips. Well, I'll do it for you. It needs blocking. So if I try and put it on without messing up my clips, so that I don't have to spin it, this could be awkward. How's that? So it needs to be blocked so that, because this side it goes over the ear and that's fine, like that's part of the, or my waltz. Maybe it's super awkward. I can't see myself. I can't tell if I look utterly ridiculous or if it looks perfect. So there you go. That's how it looks. I do have a big noggin. I do. So, I'd like to block it a little more over this one, but it feels like it's sitting okay. This is my welted took. That's finished. Um, yeah. And that was, that was really fun, quick knit. And that came out of the Weekend Hats book. And the next thing I'm thinking about casting on, out of here, is the Pebble Beanie. I think that's great. You knit it, you knit the wrong side out, so uh, the, the right side is the reverse, so it's kind of cool looking, and it looks to be, to me, I haven't read it, looks like a slip stitch pattern, um, and, I, and it uses a socket, that's what they're calling for, fingering weight. So I think a something like this, that kind of variegated yarn, will look amazing. I don't want to have this color, so I'm not going to use this one for that. Um, although I could be a good use for that, because 
that one did have the cashmere in it. But I'm thinking I'm going to use my um, No Makers No More Fire, which has Delina in it. So it'll be a little glitz, and it's a uh, it's like a fiery orangey red with a little bit of purple in it. So I think that'll be perfect. So look for that in the coming weeks. Also, um, I cast on the pie shop in the middle of that. Now, I didn't mean it to be a pie shawl, and I probably spent an hour online last night just wasting my knitting time, basically, looking for a good baby blanket. I want to get myself going and using up some of this old stash yarn that I have, and also knitting baby, knitting the two baby blankets I need to knit for a June and a July baby. So, um, actually, I first cast on a square and I was working on that, and so I was doing sort of hobbling together four or five different patterns for to get the idea of what I wanted. And I was doing um, stockinette, and then I was going to do a few rows of lace, and then back to stockinette, and keep going like that. I did it. I tried three or four. I tried three different laces on it, and then said, you know what? Cotton isn't meant to be a lace. Not with like knit four together or knit even more than two together. It just gets too bulky. Like I wanted the lace open work for the shawl, but I think, I mean not for the shawl, for the baby blanket, but I think if I'm going to get open work, it needs to be more like double yarn overs and then you drop one versus um, lots of yarn overs and then knitting together. And plus a lot of holes in a blanket, little fingers are going to get caught. So I just took that off the needles so that I could show you and then cast on for the pie shell because I was like, well, okay, let's try that. In the round, and there is a little bit of, there are holes in it, but I don't think it's, there, it's not that bad. So this is the mint colorway. I have four skeins of it. It doesn't say on the ball how many yards are in it, and it doesn't say on Rav how many yards are in it. So we'll go until I run out, I guess. Um, so the pie shell has these this center bit right here that's about the size of my finger and then it has interesting diamonds and bees and things so i think that'll be really fun i'm going to plan to go out about that far and then put some ripply edging thing on it so assuming i have enough yardage so i'm not really wild about the mint color i definitely prefer the yellow for a baby unknown both are unknown at this point although i think Jeanette's gonna find out what it is so That'll be a little easier. Um, and I was thinking about it, and a baby blanket it takes a little bit more work, but that was the most useful thing, that gift that we received that I used the longest were the blankets. So I'd like that, and I'll make a matching, if I have enough, a matching hat. Wouldn't this look really cute with like a little beanie with hot pink edging? I know, hot pink, and then maybe one with the blue edging. We'll see how much you I'm getting ahead of myself. But also, so this was last night. Instead of working on my sweater, I'm like, oh, let me play and design and work on <laughs> Let me just go to Elizabeth because she'll know what to do. So I love her. I love her patterns. I love the way she writes. And I just have to tell you that the instructions for this, this is the pie shawl is July. And her pattern, the name of her pattern it are pithy directions for a plain shawl. <laughs> about 72 inches across. It's so funny. So she's such a good sense of humor. So I um, imagine I'm going to read a little bit more of that book, just having it out and about. Um, I won't be able to help myself. So that's on the needles. I love every day. And this is my big, big bag, big bag. Um, and then lastly, oh gosh, yarn everywhere. I had tucked all of Linus is sitting here for his two good eyes. Um, I don't know if you can see him. He's putting his nose in the bag. Nose in the bag! Um, so these are my finished prayer socks for my cousin Stacy. Um, it's just a 2x2 two two rib knit on US 1.0 2.25 millimeter needles. I use 716. I, whatever her fingering weight base is, and in the Worse Than Zombies colorway, and they feel very um, sturdy, very substantial. I like the density of the stitches. I think they're going to wear really, really well. The color is crazy bright. My cousin is going to love them. 
I, um, at about that point right there, I started, instead of the 2x2 two two rib, I did a twisted, 1x1 uh, one one twisted rib. I've never done that before. I love, love the way, and I'm not going to be able to show you, I want to show you, love the way that the black, that the cables pop, and not cables, the stitches pop right out on that. Um, first time I've ever done a twisted rib was on the beatnik, the bottom edge of that, and I was like, hey, that looks pretty cool. And it looks really, really neat. Um, and then I used the modified Russian bind off to get that super, super loose cast off bind off at the top. It makes it flare though. It doesn't look that pretty. But I do know that she has substantial calves. So I want them to, to just fit. So size six, super tiny fast knit. So those are off my needles. Woohoo! And these, if you're knitting socks and you don't watch the stocking at zombies, you need to, and you need to go enter them in their monthly um, now for our striped socks. So these are my second pair. These are my February striped socks for that. And then I cast on a pair from my grandmother. So my grandmother asked for some, actually my mother called to say, can I give your grandmother help? I don't know if I told you this or not. Can I give your grandmother a pair of uh, one of my pairs of hand knit socks, and I was like, excuse me, what? Why? Well, she, her feet are cold, and she doesn't have any hand knit socks. <laughs> Why don't you just say what you want, which is for me to knit her a pair of socks. <laughs> so, well, slippers and socks, right? So, uh, and the slippers were a failure. I'll get back to them, but I'm not there right now. So, this is Patton's Christ Sock. Uh, the rag shades in gray brown marl, which there's clearly a ton of red in that. So these are, it's, um, I've knit, this is, let's see, I knit a Louis the Love Bot with this. I knit Roland a hat with this. I knit Roland a sweater with this. I knit a pair of socks. I don't know who they're, I, don't, I think they're for me and they're out in the bin. And, yeah, I have a bin of hand knits <laughs> and socks that. Because I was not such a sock knitter. Anyways, um, I have ones I wear that are in rotation and then brand new ones waiting. So I cast on. There's my toe. So it's a brown, brown tweed right now. I did go up a needle size from what I have been using lately because this is a very heavy fingering weight yarn. Um, it's almost a sport weight, and I knew that. So I went up, I went up to 1.5, 2.5 millimeter if I'm, if my, uh, Anyways, so that's that's going. That's my um, gonna be my new purse knitting. I need to cast on the second one, so I have to alternate. What else do I have to tell you about? So the welted tote, the purse. Oh, that's it. That's all I have for knitting. That's it for knitting content. And I hate it when I put things back on the table because it's kind of fun for me to finish and have a clear it off table because I've moved everything onto the floor out of the way. I got my knitters for Knocker's Bag. So his and her podcast, Melissa and Sean Maliabella over on Ravelry, she is doing the um, Susan Coleman Breast Cancer Walk in July. Um, you should definitely go donate. Go check out the blog because they're awesome. Watch their podcast. They're super funny. They're so sweet. And then um, follow the links and donate to her, to her fund. So, because that's an amazing event, walking 60 miles in three days. I, there's a part of me that's like, you could totally do that. You should do that. You should do that. Because it's a, it's a once in a lifetime event, except, well, this is, this is her second time. But, um, yeah, I so admire that. Maybe someday I will. I <clears throat> volunteered, it was the Avon walk at that time down in Boston for like three years, just at the check-in. So checking people in and giving them all their stuff that they had signed up for and getting them their tent assignments and all that. And those people are amazing. Their energy and their commitment. And, oh, okay, I'm not preaching. Anyways, so Melissa is, um, and We Sparrow have combined Acme, I think is her Etsy store, A-C-M-E, Etsy.com, I want to say, have combined, and they're doing fundraising, doing these knitters for knockers bags. So I ordered one and it arrived. I love it. I love it. So, and then inside are all, <laughs> are a dirty pair of rolling socks. That's right, because the night that these, that this came, these two things, I got ordered yarn and 
um, a bag that came and I opened the packages and Roland was like, ah, let me fly, let me fly. And so he walked around just putting things in the bag and then dumping it out and then putting things in the bag and he took out his socks and those were <laughs> um, I also want to recommend the uh, Two Tangled Skeins podcast. They are hilarious. There's, that's two uh, Canadian ladies with a pug. And um, it's my favorite. That's my favorite podcast. It comes on every week and that's my go-to show. Like, I'm waiting for end of the day Saturday because that's when it's going to pop up. I went back and watched all the back episodes. They're my favorite. I love them. So, they're hilarious. <laughs> Actually, they're prob their humor is probably similar to that of my extended family. So, it's kind of like hanging out with my cousins and my aunts. And, you know, it's just fun. So, um, they are doing a knit-along for the, um, with Knitty and Color. And so I ordered a couple skeins for her. So the colorway that I got that's for the knit along is not drinking Merlot. A super great price. It says $22 on it. Yeah, $22 a skein for 400 yards of an 80-20 super wash, super wash merino. Yeah, nylon. So, and it's this gorgeous, rich, violet colorway. So um, the knit along, it's a knit along spin along. The knitting part starts in March. I have no idea what I'm going to knit, but I'm going to do something. It's going to be glorious. It's probably going to be a hat or cowl. Something that has to do with my patterns. And then the other one I got that Steve was like, wow, that's really cool, is um, Ultra Light at Night. And that's 400 yards of that one as well. And it has this really cool, you can see the neon green, electric blue, hot pink, and then there's a little bit of violet there, over there. So, and the, the base is mainly huh, black. It's black, but it's weird. It's like it changes whether it's next to the blue or next to the purple. Or, it's really cool. I love it. So, and she sent a coupon card, so that was nice of her. And a little mini skein of something with Stellina. Oh, crush, crush, crush. That's a merino nylon Stellina. So, oh, that must be the colorway. Crush, crush, crush. So, those are my new acquisitions this week. Um, I think that's about all I wanted to tell you, except I do want to do a 2013 update. tell you that for this, the month of February, I have completed one, no, two pairs of, yes, two pairs of self-stripe, which was one of the rules. Um, one pattern, the toque, right, the welted toque is one from a pattern book, and then uh, a sweater, my harvest moon is off the needles. So there you go. I'm working on getting some of the old yarn knit and thinking about the beanie as my next book knitting. So, 2013 is well on its way. Um, it's still snowing out. <laughs> I think it'll still be snowing in five hours from now, but yeah, I am toasty warm and ready to go do some knitting for me now because the little one is napping. And I hope you have enjoyed your knitting time with me and I'll look forward to seeing you again in about 10 days or so.